Hi everybody, Sarah here from smallbusinesssarah.com and today I have another Amazon bookkeeping video for you. Now in the previous video, I showed you how to add your Amazon income and Amazon expenses into QuickBooks so that you will have your information accurately presented in your bookkeeping and you're gonna tie out to your 1099 at year end. I'll link to that video in the description. Take a look at the cards as well. But beyond just the information that Amazon specifically provides in regard to sales and fees, there are a lot of other transactions that you are going to have in your bookkeeping. And that is what this video is going to cover. So I have other general videos about how to link your accounts to QuickBooks. I have videos about adding account names into QuickBooks and things like that. So go ahead and check out my Amazon playlist for some of those other background getting started type videos if you're not sure what to do. Once you've connected your accounts to QuickBooks, then transactions in those business accounts, and I do recommend using separate business accounts for your business, checking credit cards, PayPal, whatever you're using. All of those transactions that are occurring are gonna be brought into QuickBooks in the bank transactions section. I call this the bank feed. You can get to that here from the left menu, transactions, bank transactions. And I have already linked my accounts and items have been brought in and so I'm ready to go. So everything first appears in the for review section. And what we need to do is we need to tell QuickBooks where to put them. And when we categorize, this is called categorization, when we categorize our transactions, that is what creates then the reports that we need to use to understand how our business is doing. So as we categorize behind the scenes, we're creating our balance sheet report, we're creating our profit and loss report, and that tells us how we're doing in our business, and it also gives us the information we need to do our tax return at the end of the year. So I'm in the checking account, and the first thing I'm going to do is any of my deposits from Amazon, I'm going to categorize to Amazon Holding. If you don't understand this, you need to watch the other video first. I'm going to click Update. These are deposits. I'm not going to add a payee. I'm just going to select Amazon Holding. I'm not going to set a rule for this, but if you would like to, you could. There we go. Now all of those have disappeared and now they would appear in my Categorized tab. If I want to undo something, I can go to the Categorize tab and click Undo. Let's head on over to the business credit card where a lot of the other transactions are that I want to categorize. You'll notice here, let me first mention this. This is a credit card payment, and here we're going to go to our business credit card. And you'll see that QuickBooks has realized that the two transactions match. It's recognizing it's a credit card payment and it's recognizing where the money came from and this is correct. It's very important that you match your credit card payments between the money leaving the bank account and going into your credit card. You can do that by making sure this is selected or recording it as a transfer between the two accounts, but whichever way you do it, it's important that you are not categorizing these. They need to be a transfer or paired as a credit card payment. So we're gonna go ahead and add card payment. I'm gonna go back to the checking. Now that transaction is gone and we don't have to worry about it. It's been paired between the two. This is a other income type item. So I'm just gonna go ahead and select the category I would like to use. I'm gonna just start typing and I'm gonna find the category that makes the most sense. In this, in this case, I'm gonna use other ordinary income. This is not Amazon income, it's something else. I can go ahead and create as many income names as I would want for other ways that my business is earning money. And then those would appear on the profit and loss report. 
once we've categorized our transactions, we'll get a good idea. This number represents what we've categorized in QuickBooks, and then this is a number that's being electronically brought in to QuickBooks as the balance in your checking account. Now, sometimes there can be a difference between the two, even after you've categorized everything, just due to a timing difference, but this will give you a good gauge on how reconciled your accounts are. Like it's a kind of a quick glance to tell you if you're in good shape or if maybe you have an error. If these two numbers are wildly different, you're definitely going to want to formally reconcile this account and that can be done on the reconcile tab. I recommend formally reconciling anyway, but if you have a big difference, it's really important you do that. I have other videos that call, cover reconciliation, so we're not gonna go over that here. So let's move on to business credit card. So now we're just going through and we're telling QuickBooks where to put these transactions. So we've got Hiscox for insurance. If I didn't have a vendor already populating, I would go ahead and add one. You can just start typing the vendor name and create a new one directly from here. It's very important to use vendors for expenses when you can because it just makes finding those transactions and making corrections a lot easier down the road if needed. So that's my business insurance. I'll put a link to Hiscox in the description if you are in need of insurance for your small business. Let's go over everything else before that Amazon. This is a credit card redemption of rewards. And so in this case, it's not a transfer from checking, it's you know our bonus points. I like to create a separate account for this called credit card rewards. Just gonna create it on the fly. You must make sure you get the account type correct. It's gonna default to bank when you create new accounts and that's often incorrect. I'm gonna choose other income. See, it's so easy to just create accounts on the fly. I don't worry about adding customers as often as I worry about adding vendors. Let's go to Google Apps. I have a rule established for this and I think that is perfectly fine. So rather than clicking on the transaction, I can simply add. In this example, for Amazon, we're going to pretend that ThreadUp is the company we are buying our items for resale on Amazon. I don't worry about filling in everything here, I just save it. Okay, so as you know, when you run an Amazon business, you are buying items to resell whether that's retail arbitrage, whether that's buying wholesale and selling retail. A question I get all the time is about inventory and QuickBooks and Amazon. So here's what I do. The caveat is my advice is for a small business. If you are doing millions of dollars in Amazon sales, then I would look into a more sophisticated method, program, app, etc. But for the small business owner, the goal is to get accurate bookkeeping done quickly and easily. And the way we do that in regard to Amazon and inventory and cost of goods sold is we keep our bookkeeping on the cash basis of accounting. In the cash basis of accounting, we categorize inventory purchases directly to cost of goods sold. And we don't worry about the movement of you know buying inventory then it gets sold back and forth doing that entry and we don't keep an inventory record in our quickbooks account that becomes very cumbersome difficult time consuming expensive all of that so my amazon method relies on the amazon summary report once again look at that other video and you don't need an app or an integration or anything confusing to do that method of Amazon bookkeeping. So this is another way we are just keeping it simple. It's still accurate, 
it's still good, but we are just eliminating a lot of the confusion, difficulty, expense, etc. Like I said, cash basis is perfect for the small business owner. If you are a big time seller, then I would recommend you find a bookkeeping company that can help you with more advanced things, including keeping an inventory in your accounting records. So we are just gonna go to cost of goods sold directly and add that. At the end of the year, if you would like to do an inventory count of the items that you have on hand at year end and estimate the cost of those items, or maybe you know the cost of those items, you can adjust your bookkeeping for that number at the end of the year, at the end of the month. That's not a problem. How you would do that is just through new journal entry, new journal entry. You would just use the inventory account and the cost of goods sold account and adjust the numbers accordingly between the two to put an inventory balance on your balance sheet and reduce your cost of goods sold balance. But throughout the year, throughout the month, it just makes a lot of sense to keep your bookkeeping on the cash basis and record all of those inventory and raw material purchases directly to cost of goods sold. Okay, let's keep going. This QuickBooks is suggesting, I categorize this to virtual assistant. I agree. I'm gonna go ahead and click add into it. I paid for my QuickBooks a year at a time. So I'm gonna put that in something like office expenses. You can't really go wrong on a lot of these expense categorizations. This could have been office expenses. It could have been online tools. At the end of the day, pick a category or name a category that makes sense to you and that's gonna help you understand how your business is doing. At the end of the year, you can combine your accounts to fit the IRS categories on the Schedule C, but to be honest, the IRS Schedule C categories are so outdated, they're so not intended for an online business that often so many things just have to be lumped together on the Schedule C, and it makes much more sense in your bookkeeping to separate things out in a meaningful way for you. So we're gonna go ahead and add that. Tailwind is for social media posting. So I'm gonna call that an online tools. I'll have a link to Tailwind in the description. It's, I use it all the time for Pinterest. It's a huge help for Pinterest scheduling and makes that easy. And then this particular purchase, oh, it's a personal item. So I am gonna categorize that as owner's pay. So if you accidentally use your business accounts for a personal purchase, you would use the category owner's pay. This is an equity item, it appears on your balance sheet. If you add money to your business, especially in the early days, you would categorize those deposits as owner's investment, and that is also, or owner's contribution, either way, also an equity item, also will appear on the balance sheet. I have separate videos about that. Okay, and last but not least, we come to an Amazon charge. So. If Amazon charges your credit card or your bank account because at the end of the month you were negative, this happens especially at first. If you've got more fees than you have sales, Amazon is gonna charge you to get you back up to zero. Now we do not wanna categorize this as an expense because we're already capturing all of our expenses when we add our Amazon summary as a journal entry. And this is discussed in more detail in that video as well. But once again, just like the deposits, we want this to go to Amazon holding. And both the deposits and the charges are going to appear in that lower left section of the Amazon summary report. And so you can confirm what those are and that those are the transactions that should go to Amazon holding. So I'm gonna go ahead and click add. Okay, and that's all there is to it. I recommend you set up separate bank and credit card accounts for your business. I'll include links to suggestions in the description that are really easy for online business owners. And then you connect those accounts to QuickBooks. You use your business accounts exclusively for business. Follow the other video to learn how to record your Amazon sales and Amazon specific fees in your bookkeeping, and then just categorize the rest of the transactions accordingly. Let me show you what it looks like in a report. 
So we're going to go to reports, balance sheet first. So the balance sheet shows you the balance at a specific point in time. So I've got a bunch of other things going on up here, so you can ignore some of that. But we've got our business checking, Amazon holding. This is negative because I haven't done my Amazon journal entry that I discussed in the other video. Any liabilities, any sales tax, and then we have our owner's equity items. If you make a federal estimated tax payment, you should record that to an equity section. Same with state. If you pay yourself, you should record it to owner's pay. Let's look at a profit and loss. I went ahead and set the dates to this month, and then I hit run report. This profit and loss doesn't have any Amazon income. I haven't done an Amazon a journal entry in this sample client. Some of these items were also already added previously. What you can see is some of the items we did add. We did add the insurance, we added the credit card rewards, etc. And then that's what populates this report. And since it, this is just for November, some of the transactions we categorized were other months, but you can just change the reporting period to see how you are doing. And if you followed my other video and you've done your journal entry for your month, your Amazon journal entry, then you would see on the profit and loss. That's where you would see your Amazon income items and then your Amazon expense items. Thanks so much for watching and let me know if you have any questions by leaving them in the comments. Have a great day.